All right, now we're going to be looking at the muscles of the arm and hand. You probably didn't think there was going to be that many, um, but there's quite a few. We have flexors and extensors, abductors, adductors, and rotators. All right. All right, so next we have the deltoid. You might be familiar with this one. This is a triangle-like group of muscles, and it abducts, removes, pulls away the arm. Uh, the anterior fibers flex, and medially towards the midline of the body rotate the arm. Posterior fibers can extend and laterally rotate the arm. All right, so here we have the coracobrachialis. Um, this attaches to the coracoid process on the arm, and this flexes, flexes, and adducts or takes away the arm. I'm sorry, to adduct to bring in, add together. Remember, ab abduct is to remove, to pull away, like somebody has abducted a child. Adduct, you're adding them together, bringing them closer in. All right, so here we have the teres major. So what does that mean you're also going to have? You said teres minor, that's right. Uh, so this is the greater rounded muscle is what teres major means. So this adducts the arm, adduction, adds, add them together. Medially rotates the arm and assists. Cyst is one of the muscles that helps in arm extension. Now we have the teres minor, and this is the lesser rounded muscle, and this laterally rotates the arm. All right, we've got the supraspinatus. All right, super means above. Spinatus refers to the spine. So this is the above the spine muscle, and this abducts or takes away the arm, and this is what actually initiates abduction. All right, so next we have the subscapularis. Sub means below. Scapula, of course, refers to the scapula or shoulder blade. So this is the under the scapula muscle. And this medially or toward the midline of the body rotates the arm and, and assists or helps with extension of the arm. All right, so infraspinatus. Infra means below and spinatus, spine, although it's not really below the spine. Um, it's actually kind of below the spine of the scapula, all right, so that's what that's referring to. Uh, so this laterally rotates the arm. All right, next we have biceps brachii. Um, this is two-headed, but this is where we get the bi from, and you can kind of see these two heads up here. You've got there and there. Uh, and this is going to flex the forearm, flex the arm, and that's going to be a long head. Uh, and then actually cause supination. And so supination is where you are holding your soup up, right? Supination. So you're holding it this way, turning it, rotating it. Up. Next, we have the triceps, which you're probably familiar with biceps and triceps, but we got to add the brachii. And so triceps means three-headed. This extends the forearm. Um, the long head then will also extend and adduct the arm. All right, next we have the brachialis. Brachialis, this is the arm muscle here. Uh, we can also take a brachial pulse, and this helps to flex the forearm. Flex it, right? Brachioradialis means arm and radius muscle. It flexes the elbow and assist in that pronation and supination. So supination, you're holding your bowl of soup. Pronation, you pour it out. So that's what those are. Um, there are a few links for videos for what these uh, terms of movement mean. So please be sure you do watch those so you understand what we're talking about. So here we have the supinator muscle, uh, which means supinator. <laughs> so what do you think it does? Well, it causes supination. So if you're this way, and you supinate, you're going to hold your bowl of soup, right? And if you pronate, you're going to pour it out. Remember that terrace means rounded, and so rounded pronator. So pronation, pour it out, right? Uh, so this pronates the, fo the forearm, pour out the soup. So pronator quadratus, well, Quad means four, right? So quadratus, and of course we know what pronate is, pronates mean. I've said it enough times, right? And so this pronates the it's uh, the uh, forearm, and it is four-sided. 
Flexor carpi radialis. This is the wrist bender of the radius. Wrist bender. Uh, remember, these are our carpals, right? Or where our wrist is. So that's where we get the carpi. Uh, and flexion is the flexing part. And uh, radialis is because it's the one that is joining on, goes along the radius bone. And so it makes perfect sense if you really understand what these words mean. So you can probably just figure this one out. Flexicarpi ulnaris is going to be the wrist bender of the ulna. All right, so this flexes the wrist and adducts the hand. Palmaris longus. So palmaris refers to the palm, <coughs> excuse me, and longus means it's long. So long palm muscle and it flexes the wrist. Flexor digitorum profundus, all right? So we know flexor is referring to action. Well, what are your digits? Your digits are your fingers or toes. And so profundus is going to be, this is your deep finger bender. <laughs> deep fender, finger, not fender bender, finger bender. Uh, and this flexes the ph uh, phalangeal uh, joints. Flexor digitorum superficialis, all right? So we know this must flex, and it has to do with the digits or the fingers. Well, what does superficial mean? Superficial means more near the surface, okay? So this is more near the surface. So superficial finger bender, <laughs> all right? And it flexes more of those joints. Extem ex sorry, tongue tied. Extensor carpi radialis longus. That is a tongue twister. It's going to extend. We know it has to do with the wrist because it says carpi and the radius, and it must be long, right? So this is the long wrist stretcher or of the radius, and it extends the wrist and abducts the hand. Well, how many coffee drinkers out there do I have? Have you ever ordered a breve? All right, breve. So longest is the long one, and breve basically means short. So extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor is going to cause extension. Carpi means of the wrist, uh, radialis near the radius, and then brevis means it's the shorter one. So this is the short wrist stretcher radius, extends the wrist and adducts the hand. Abducts, abducts, takes away. All right, so extensor carpi ulnaris. All right, so this is gonna go along near the ulna. This is the wrist stretcher of the ulna. Uh, extends the wrist and adducts the hand. All right, so now we have the extensor digiti minimi. Well, minimi means small. So it's just the small finger stretcher and it extends the uh, phalangeal joint. Extensor digitorum just means finger stretcher and it extends the joints. Um, these are going to take some work to learn. I would highly suggest that you draw out these groups of muscles. For instance, take this picture here, draw that out uh, as best you can. Um, highlight maybe each muscle in a different color or outline it with a different color pen and label it. All right, do that a few times and that's going to help you to learn these. All right, next we have the abductor pollicis longus. This is the longer puller aware of the thumb. <laughs> All right, abductor pollicis longus. Uh, this abducts the thumb at the carpometacarpal joint, and I don't expect you to know which joint that is, okay? Carpometacarpal joint, though. It's going to abduct or take away the thumb. Um, anyway, that's good for right now, so we need to know. All right, so we have the ad, uh, extensor pollicis longus. This is the long thumb extender or stretcher. It extends the thumb at the interphalangeal joint of the hand. This is a hinge joint between the phalanges of the fingers and it provides flexion, hmm, flexion towards the palm of the hand. All right, it also might uh, help you to know that when we talk about the thumb and the big toe, we have the pollux and the hallux. And so this is where pollicis is coming from. I hadn't told you that yet. It's the pollux, so we're talking about the thumb. So extensor pollicis brevis is the short thumb extender or stretcher, and it adducts the thumb.
add depth, adds it together, brings it back in. All right, so now we have the extensor indices. Uh, this is referring to the index finger indices and is going to extend or stretch the index finger.